while we're waiting for everybody to join, go ahead and go into Google Classroom. And you will see something that says a raisin in the sun act one. Go ahead and open that up. So we're going to go to Google Classroom, Classwork, a raisin in the sun act one. And you will see two things. The Raisin in the Sun and Act 1 Notes. We're going to start by talking about Act 1 Notes. Okay, so everybody should have, hi Isaac, hi Anthony, hi John, I think I already said hi John. But, okay. okay, so uh, let's go ahead and look at Act 1 notes. So for each of the characters listed below, you're going to find at least one passage from the play in which this character's aspirations or ambitions are stated, referred to, or shown. And the speaker does not necessarily have to be the same character. For example, Walter might make a statement about his sister, Benithia, and her ambitions. Make sure to note the speaker and the page number on which the page appears. After copying the passage, write your own thoughts about this passage. Aim to address the following issues in your response. Why do you, what do you think of the character and their ambition? Given the historical and social context, is the aspiration or ambition realistic? Why or why not? What might be some of the obstacles for the character? And what might be some of the strengths that this character has that would help him or her overcome any obstacles? And we've got Walter, Lena, who's mama, Benithia, Travis, Ruth. Okay. <clears throat> Everybody see that? It's under classwork and it's called unit one. Act one notes. Okay. That is what you're going to fill out. We're going to read act one today and then our next class. And by the end of it, you should have these notes filled out. You have your own copy of the play that you can annotate as we read. If you'll pull open the other document, A Raisin in the Sun, this is your own copy. And so if you see stuff about aspirations, you can highlight it in here. You just take your cursor and highlight it. Okay? There you go, just like that. Okay. So this is your own personal copy of the play. Now, I expect all of you, we're going to read this play out loud, which means you guys are going to um, volunteer for some parts, or I'm going to assign you some parts, and then we're going to read it together. And when we finish Act 1, Scene 1, we are done for the day. So this will take as long or as short as I get to take, okay? If you remember our poem, Harlem, what do you do with a dream deferred, right? With a dream that's delayed. That's part of the theme of this play. So here are the characters that I have. <clears throat> I have Walter and his wife, Ruth, their son, Travis, Walter's mom, Lena, Walter's sister, Benithia, Willie Harris and Bobo, Carl Linder, and then Joseph. So I would like you guys to tell me what part 
you would like. All right, and if not, I'm going to assign. So here we go. We've got Walter. Sorry. We've got Walter, Ruth, Travis, Tina, Mama. I'll be the wife. Okay, Jade is a Ruth. Marker. Did I mention I give extra credit for reading? Okay, Isaac, who do you want to be? Um, the kid? All right, Isaac Benavidez is Travis, the kid. So we need Walter and Mama. Okay, Larry, who do you want to be? Myself. So your choices are Walter, Lena, Benicio, Willie, Bobo, Carl, or Joseph? I'll be Bobo. All right. Okay, who is next on my list? Kiara, who do you want to be? Kimberly, how about you? Angel, are you there? We're gonna have a long class today. Anthony. Yes. Angel, what part do you want? We're reading a play, everybody has to be a part. What part do you want? Um. I put the names in the text box. We have Walter, Lena, Benicia, Willie, Carl, and Joseph left. Uh, okay. Okay, so Kimberly, Anthony, Brianna, Kiara, Yvette, Francisco, Isaac Perez, and John. I still need to hear from you guys what parts you would like, and Alden. Let me get Carl. All right, Carl is John. Okay. Wait, who's that left? Walter is the main character. He's left. We've got Benicia, the sister, Willie Harris, and Joseph. Ooh, which one talks the last, least? Uh, it's going to be Willie or Joseph. All right. Uh, I'm going to go with good old Joe. Okay, great. Okay. Do somebody got room? Uh, we need a Benicia. Kiara, how about you? Benicia. Yeah, okay, yeah. I got it. All right, thanks. Okay, we've got Willie and we've got Walter. Yes, Yvette. Brianna, you can be Francisco. We've got Walter, who's a main character, and we've got Willie. Okay, Brianna's going to be Walter. Okay, and Yvette's going to be Willie. Okay, which means, Francisco, that I need some help with being the narrator. 
Okay, so let's go ahead and pull open. I've got everybody's name on the board. Let me add you, Francisco. Okay. Yes, Francisco, you are. So those people who are participating in reading, y'all get extra credit. Those people who aren't, you may be called on to pick up a part at any point. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at the text for Raisin in the Sun. Okay, your text should look like this. Okay, we've got in the beginning what happens to a dream deferred. Does it dry up or fester like a sore and then run? Does it stink like rotten meat or crust and sugar over like a surfy sweet? Maybe it just sags like a heavy load. Does it explode? Okay, so when you're reading a play, it lays it out for us in terms of acts. And within each act, there is a scene. So we're going to read Act 1, Scene 1 today, which takes place on Friday morning. The narrator is going to read all of the stuff in italics, and that is going to give us some background information um, about the play. So if we were actually implementing this play, this information would tell us what it is that the setting in the play needs to look like. Okay, so um, I'm expecting you guys to pay attention and read when it's your part, and um, I'll help give you cues if we need them. And let's see what's going on in our story. So, Francisco, are you ready to start? Yeah. All right, let's do it. Oh, wait, which one do I read? The younger living room would be a comfortable and well-ordered room. The younger living room would be a comfortable and well-ordered room if it were not for a number of indestructible contradictions to this state of being. It's furnished and typical and undistinguished and their primary features now, now is that they have a clearly had to accommodate the living of too many people for too many years and they are, are tired still we can see that at some time a time probably no longer remembered by the family except perhaps for mama the furnishing of this room were actually selected with care and love and even hope and brought to this apartment and arranged with taste and pride that was that was a long time ago. Now the once loved oh, now the once loved pattern of the couch upholsters has to fight to show itself from under acres of um crocheted crochet. Crochet dollies and couch covers, which have themselves finally come to be more important than the upholstery. And here, okay. a table or a chair has been moved to disguise the worn place in the carpet, but the carpet has fought back by showing its weariness with depressing uniformity elsewhere on its surface. Keep going, you're doing great. Okay. Um, Weariness has her at the top of the next column. Weariness has, in fact, won in this room. Everything has been polished, washed, sat on, used, scrubbed too often. All pretense but living mm -hmm. itself have long since vanished from the very atmosphere of this room. Moreover, a section of this room for it is not really a room in, in unto. unto itself do the landlord's lease would make it seem so slopes backwards to provide a small kitchen area where the family prepares the meals that are eaten in the living room proper which must also serve as a dining room 
the single window that has been provided for these two rooms is located in the kitchen area. The sole natural light the family may enjoy in the course of a day is only that which fights its way through this little window. At, at left, a door leads to a bedroom which is sh shared by Mama and her daughter. Um, I think it's ben Benicia, but I'm not sure. Benicia at right opposite is a second room, which is the beginning of the life of this apartment was probably a breakfast room, which serves as a bedroom for Walter and his wife, uh, Ruth. Okay, you did great. I'm going to take over for a little bit. Um, so y'all quickly tell me about this place where they live. What does it look like? Old. It's older. Yeah. It's a little not old as in historic and, and cool like the Fairmont neighborhood, but old as in worn down a little bit. Everything is very used. Used to at one point be nice, but now it's kind of run down. Okay, time. Sometime between World War II and the present. Place, Chicago's South Side. At Rise. It is morning dark in the living room. Travis is asleep on the make-down bed in its center. An alarm clock sounds from within the bedroom at the right, and presently Ruth enters from that room and closes the door behind her. She crosses sleepily toward the window. As she passes her sleeping son, she reaches down and shakes him a little. At the window, she raises the shade, and a dusky south side morning light comes in feebly. She fills a pot with water and puts it on to boil. She calls to the boy between yawns in a slightly muffled voice. Ruth is about 30. We can see she was a pretty girl, even exceptionally so, but now it's apparent that life has been little that she expected, and disappointment has already begun to hang in her face. In a few years, before 35 even, she will be known among her people as a settled woman. She crosses her son and gives him a good final, she crosses to her son and gives him a good final rousing shake. Come on now, boy, it's 7.30. The, the, the so you don't read the stuff in the parentheses that's yeah. just telling the characters what to do yeah um i say hurry up travis you ain't the only person in the world who got to use the bathroom the child a sturdy handsome little boy of 10 or 11 drags himself out of the bed and almost blindly takes his towels and today's clothes from drawers in a closet and goes out to the bathroom which is an outside hall which is shared by another family, our families in the same floor. Ruth crosses to the bedroom door at the right and opens it and calls into her husband. Walter Lee, it's uh, after 7.30. Let me see you do some waking up in there now. Uh, she waits. You, be you better get up from there, man. If uh, It's after 7.30, I tell you. All right, you just go ahead and lay there. The next thing you know, Travis will be finished, and Miss Johnson will be in there, and you'll be fussing and cussing around uh, here like a madman, and it'll be too late. Walter Lee, it's time for you to get up. She waits another second and then starts to go into the bedroom, but is apparently satisfied that her husband has begun to get up, so she stops, pulls the door to, and returns to the kitchen area. She wipes her face with a moist cloth and runs fingers through her sleep disheveled hair in a vain effort and ties an apron around her house coat. The bedroom door at the right opens and her husband stands in the doorway in his pajamas, which are rumpled and mismated. He is a lean, intense, nervous man in his middle 30s, inclined to quick nervous movements and erratic speech habits, and always in his voice there's a quality of indictment. Brianna. Jade. Oh, what do you mean out? He ain't hardly gone in there good yet. Walter's wandering in, still more oriented than sleep to a new day. Well, what was you doing all that yelling for if I can't even get in there yet? Check coming today. 
Uh, they said Saturday. This is if Friday, and I hope to God you ain't going to get up there first thing this morning and start talking to me about no money, because I don't know. I don't want to hear it. Something matter? I mean, something the matter with you this morning? No, I'm just sleepy as the devil. What kind of eggs you want? Not scrambled. So Ruth starts to scramble the eggs. Paper come? Ruth points impatiently to the rolled up tribune on the table and gets it and spreads it out vaguely and reads the front page. Set off another bomb yesterday. Did they? What's the matter with you? Ain't nothing the matter with me, and don't you keep asking me this morning. Uh, ain't nobody bothering you. Say mm -hmm. Colonel Me McMore is sick. It's Colonel McCormick. That's a weird way to spell Colonel, I know, but that's how we spell it. <laughs> oh, my bad. No, 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 you're fine. Nick is sick. Is he now? Poor thing. Okay, the top of the next column. Walter sighing and looking at his watch. Oh, me. Now, what is that boy doing in the bathroom all the time? He's just going to start getting up earlier. I can't keep being late to work on account of him fooling around in there. Oh, no, he ain't going to uh, be getting up no earlier, no such thing. It ain't his fault that he can't get to bed no early nights because he, he's got a bunch of crazy good-for-nothing clowns sitting up running their mouths uh, in what is supposed to be his bedroom after 10 o'clock at night. That's what you mad about, ain't it? The things I want to talk about with my friends just couldn't be important in your mind, could they? He rises and finds a cigarette in her handbag on the table and crosses to the little window that looks out, smoking and deeply enjoying the first one. Why you always got to smoke before you eat in the morning? Just look at him down there, running and racing to work. He turns and faces his wife and watches a moment at the stove, and then suddenly... You look young this morning, baby. <laughs> yeah. Just, just for a second, staring the Megs, just for a second, it was... You look real youngster. I mean, real young again. Uh, what happened? I was reading off the thing, my bad. You're fine, I'm so sorry, okay. Um, where, where are we? Uh, it's just a second, you were scrambling them eggs. Walter, page two, right before Ruth says, man, if you don't shut up and leave me alone. Yeah, yeah okay. There we are, Brianna, right here. Okay, okay. What? Okay, um, it's gone. It's gone now. You look like yourself again. Man, if you don't shut up and leave me alone. First thing a man out to learn in life is not to make love to no color woman. First thing in the morning. You are some evil people at 8 o'clock in the morning. Travis appears in the hall doorway, almost fully dressed and quite right, quite awake now. His towels and pajamas across his shoulders. He opens the door and signals for his father to make for the bathroom in a hurry. Uh, come on. Walter gets his bathroom utensils and flies out to the bathroom. Sit down and have your breakfast, Travis. Mama, this this is Friday. Can't come in tomorrow, huh? You gotta get your mind off the money and eat your breakfast. This is the morning we're supposed to bring the 50 cents to school. Well, I ain't got no f 50 cents this morning. Teachers say we have to. 
I don't care what teachers say. I ain't got it. Eat your breakfast, Travis. I am eating. Hush up now and just eat. The boy gives her an exasperated look for her lack of understanding and then eats grudgingly. You think grandma will have it? No, and I want you to stop asking your grandmother for money. You hear me? Golly. <laughs> I don't ask her. She just give me it sometimes. <laughs> Tra Tra Travis Willard Younger, I've got too much on my uh, on me this morning to be. Maybe that. Travis. The boy hushes abruptly. They are both quiet and tense for several seconds. Can I maybe go carry some groceries and put in the supermarket for a little while after school then? Just, just brush, brush. I said. Travis jabs his spoon into his cereal bowl viciously and rests his head in anger upon his fist. If you're through eating, you can get over there and make your bed. The boy obeys stiffly and crosses the room, almost mechanically to the bed, or more or less folds the bedding into a heap, and then angrily gets his book and his cap. I'm gone. Come here. He crosses to her and she studies his head. If you don't take that comb and fix uh, this here bead, you better. Travis puts down his book with a great sigh of oppression and crosses to the mirror. His mother mutters under his breath about his stubbornness. About to march out of here with that head looking like chicken slip in it. I just don't know where you, uh, you got your stubbornness ways. And get your jacket, too. Looks chilly out this morning. Travis, with conspicuously brushed hair and jacket. I'm gone. Get car fare. Does it say car fare? Car, car fare, fare and, and, milk money. Mm -hmm. and milk money. Uh, and not a single penny for no caps. You hear me? Yes, sir. He turns in outrage to leave. His mother watches after him in frustration as he approaches the door of us comically. When she speaks to him, her voice becomes a very gentle tease. Oh, Mama, make me, uh, makes me so mad sometimes. I don't know what to do. I wouldn't kiss that woman goodbye for nothing in this world this morning. The boy finally turns around and rolls his eyes at her, knowing the mood has changed and he is vindicated. He does not, however, move toward her yet. Not for nothing in this world. Finally laughs aloud at him and holds out her arms to him, and we see that this is the way between them, very old and practiced. He crosses over to her and allows her to embrace him warmly, but keeps his face fixed with masculine rig rigidity. She holds him back from her presently and looks at him and runs her fingers over the features of his face with utter gentleness. Now, whose little old angry man are you? The masculinity and gruffness start to jade at last. Oh, golly, Mom. <laughs> <laughs> oh, golly, Mama. She pushes him with rough playfulness and finality toward the door. Get on out of here. You're going to be late. In the face of love, new aggressiveness. Mama, could I please go carry groceries? Honey, it's starting to get so cold. So cold evenings. Walter comes in from the bathroom, drawing a make-believe gun from a make-believe holster and shooting at his son. What is it he wants to do? Go carry groceries after school at the supermarket. Well, let him go. I have to. She won't give me the 50 cents. Why not? Because we don't have it. What you tell the boy things like that for? Reaching into his pants with a rather important gesture. Here, son. And he hands the boy the coin, but his eyes are directed at his wife's. Travis takes the money happily. Thanks, Dad. 
He starts out and Ruth watches both of them with murder in her eyes. Walter stands and stares back at her with defiance and suddenly reaches into his pocket again on an afterthought. Walter, without even looking at his son, still staring hard at his wife. In fact, here's another 50 cents. Buy yourself some fruit today or a taxi cab to or something. Travis. Oh, my bad. He leaps up and clasps his father around the middle with his legs, and they face each other in mutual appreciation. Slowly, Walter Lee really peeks around the boy to catch the violent rays from his wife's eyes and draws his head back down as if, in sh as if shot. You better get down now and get to school, man. Okay, goodbye. That's my boy. She looks at him in disgust and turns her back to work. You know what I was thinking about? About in the bathroom this morning? No. How come you always try to be so pleasant? What is there to be pleasant about? You want to know what I was thinking about in the bathroom or not? I know what you were thinking about. About what, me? And Willie Harris was talking about last night. Willie Harris is good for nothing loud mouth. Anybody who talks to me has to be good. Wait, good for nothing loud, loud mouth, ain't he? And what you know about who is just a good for nothing loud mouth? Charlie Atkins was just a good for nothing loud mouth too, wasn't he? when he wanted me to go in the dry cleaning business with him. And now he's a grossing 100,000 years old. I mean, 100,000 a year. $100,000 a year? You still call him a loud mouth? Oh, Walter Lee. She folds her head on her arms over the table. Walter rises and comes to her, standing over her. You tired, ain't you? Tired of everything? Me, the boy? Me, the boy? The way we live? This beat up whole everything? Ain't you? She doesn't look up. She doesn't answer. So tired, moaning and groaning all the time. But you wouldn't do nothing to help, would you? You couldn't be on my side that long for nothing, could you? Walter, please leave me alone. A man who needs for a woman to back him up. Walter. Mama will listen to you. You know she listens to you more than she do me and Benny. She think more of you. All you have to do is just sit down with her when you're drinking your coffee one morning and talking about things like you do. And uh, you just sip your coffee. See, and say easy like that you've been talking about that deal Walter Lee is so interested in. About the store and all. And sip some more coffee. Like what you're saying ain't really that important to you. And the next thing to, the next thing you know, she be listening good and asking you questions. And when I come home, I can tell her the details. This ain't no fly-by-night proposition, baby. I mean, we figured it out. Me and Willie and Bobo. Bobo. Yeah, you see this little liquor store we got in the mine cost 75000 and we figured the initial investment on the place be about 30000 see? That'd be 10000 each. Of course, there's a couple of hundred you got to pay so you don't spend your life just waiting for them clowns to let your license get approved. You mean graft? Don't call it that. See, see there? That just goes to show you that women understand about the world. Baby, don't nothing happen for you in this world unless you pay somebody off. Walter, leave me alone. Eat your eggs. They're going to be cold. That's it. There you are. Man, say to his woman, I got me a drink. His woman say, eat your eggs. 
man say, I got to take a hold of this here world, baby. And a woman would say, eat your eggs and go to work. Man say, I got to change my life. I'm choking to death, baby. And the and his woman say, um, your eggs is getting cold. Walter, that ain't none of our money. This morning, I was, oh, sorry. That's right, you're doing great. Uh, this morning, I was looking in the mirror and thinking about it. I'm 35 years old. I've been married 11 years and I got a boy who sleeps in the living room. And all I, and all I got to give him is stories about how rich white people live. Eat your eggs, Walter. Damn, my eggs, damn, all the eggs that it ever was. Then go to work. See, I'm trying to talk to you by myself. And all you can say is eat them eggs and go to work. Honey, you never say nothing new. I listen to you every day, every night, every morning, and you never say nothing new. So, you would rather be Mr. Arnold than to be his... Chauffeur. Chauffeur. So, I would rather be living in Buckingham Palace. That is what just... That is just what is wrong with the colored woman in this world. Don't understand about building their men up and making them feel like they somebody. Like they can do something. There are colored men who do things. No, thanks to the colored woman. Well, being a colored woman, I guess I can't help being, uh, myself none. She rises and gets the ironing board and sets it up and attacks a huge pile of rough dried clothes, sprinkling them in preparation for the ironing and then rolling them into tight, fat balls. We want group of men tied to a race of women with small minds. His sister, Bethina, enters. She's about 20, as slim and intense as her brother. She's not as pretty as her sister-in-law, but her lean, almost intellectual face has a handsomeness of its own. She wears a bright flannel nightie and her thick hair stands wildly about her head. Her speech is a mixture of many things. It is different from the rest of the family and so far as education has permeated her sense of English and perhaps the Midwest rather than the South has finally at last won out in her inflection, but not altogether. Because over all of it is a slurring and transformed use of vowels, which is the decided influence of the South Side. She passes through the room without looking at either Ruth or Walter and goes outside and looks a little blindly out to the bathroom. She sees it has been lost to the Johnsons and she closes the door with a sleepy vengeance and crosses to the table and sits down a little defeated. Tiara, this is you. Is Kiara still with us? Mm. Okay. Looks like we've lost Kiara. So, uh, here we go. Okay, uh, I'm gonna start timing these people. Walter, I'm oh, sorry, I'm gonna start timing these people. You should get up earlier. Really? Would you suggest Don? Where's the paper? You a horrible looking chick at this hour. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning, everybody. How is school coming? Lovely, lovely. You know, biology is the greatest. I dissected something that looked just like you yesterday. I just wondered if you made up your mind and everything. And what did I answer yesterday morning and the day before that? Don't be nasty, Benny. And the day before that and the day before that. I'm interested in you. Something wrong with that? Ain't many girls who decide. To be a doctor. Have we figured out yet just exactly how much med medical school is going to cost? 
Walter Lee, why don't you ask the girl alone and get out of here to work? Come on out of there, please. You know the check is coming tomorrow. That money belongs to Mama, Walter, and it's for her to decide how she wants to use it. I don't care if she wants to buy a house or a rocket ship or just nail it up somewhere and look at it. It's hers, not ours, hers. Nah, now ain't that fine? You just got your mother's interest at heart, ain't you, girl? You such a nice girl, but if Mama got the money, she can always take a few thousand and help you through school to too, can't she? I never asked anyone around here to do anything for me. No, and the line between asking and just accepting when the time comes is big and wide, ain't it? What do you want from me, brother, that I quit school or just drop dead, which? I don't want nothing but for you to stop acting holy around here. Me and Ruth have made some sacrifices for you, why can't you do something for the family? Walter, don't be dragging me into it. You aren't in it. Don't you get up and go to work in somebody's kitchen for the last three years to help you put clothes in her back? Oh, Walter, that's not fair. It ain't, it ain't that nobody expects you to get on your knees and say thank you, brother, thank you, Ruth, thank you, mama, and thank you. Travis for, oh wait, Travis for wearing the same pair of shoes for two semesters. Well, I do all right. Thank everybody and forgive me for ever wanting to be anything at all. Forgive me, forgive me, forgive me. Please stop it. Your mama, you hear you? Who the hell told you you had to be a doctor? If you so crazy about messing around with sick people, then go be a nurse like other women or just get married and be quiet. Well, you finally got it said. It took you three years, but you finally got it said. Walter, give up. Leave me alone. It's Mama's money. He was my father, too. So what? He was mine, too, and Travis's grandfather. But the insurance money belongs to Mama. Taking on me is not going to make her give it to you to invest in any liquor stores. And I, for one, say God bless Mama for that. See, did you hear? Did you hear, Ruth, honey? Please go to work. Nobody in the house is ever going... Wait, never mind. Sorry. Oh, wait, yeah, honey, me. please go to work. <laughs> oh, that was you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Nobody in the house is ever going to understand Mo. Because you're a nut. Who's a nut? You are a nut. B is mad, boy. The world's most backward face of people, and that's a fact. And then there were all those prophets who would lead us out of the wilderness into the swamp. Benny, why are you always going to picking on your old... Uh... Sorry. Yeah, so you are. Yeah. Can you be a little sweeter sometimes? Oh, this is good. I need some money for care fare. 50 cents. Here, take a taxi. Walter exits and Mama enters. She's a woman in her early 60s, full bodied and strong. She is one of those women of a certain grace and beauty who wear it so unobtrusively that it takes a while to notice. Her dark brown face is surrounded by the total whiteness of her hair, and being a woman who has adjusted to many things in life and overcome many more, her face is full of strength. She has, we can see, wit and faith of a kind that keep her eyes lit and full of interest and expectancy. She is, in a word, a beautiful woman. Her bearing is perhaps not like the noble bearing of the women heroes of the Southeast, Southwest Africa. Rather, she imagines that as she walks, she still bears a basket or vessel upon her head. Her speech, on the other hand, is as careless as her carriage is precise and is inclined to slur everything, but her voice is perhaps not so much quiet as simply soft. And Mama is Angel. Angel, are you with us? This hour. I'm so sorry, Angel. Say it one more time, hon. Who the women at this hour? 
tower. Go ahead. Go ahead, Jade. I'm just not going to read as much as I was before. Okay. That was Walter Lee. He and Benny was at it again. My children and their tempers, Lord, if this little old plant don't get more sun than that, then it's been getting, it's never going to see spring again. What's the matter with you this morning, Ruth? You look right pink. You aiming to iron all them things, leave some for me. I'll give them, I'll give it to them this afternoon. Being honey, it's too drafty for you to be sitting around half dressed. Where's your robe? In the cleaner. Well, go get mine and put it on. I'm not cold, Mama, honest. I know, but you so thin. Mama, I'm not cold. Lord have mercy, look at this, that poor bed. Bless his heart. He tries, don't he? Oh, uh, no, he be half, uh, he be half tried to all, cause he knows you go on to come along behind him and fix everything. That's just how come he don't know how to do nothing right now. He done spoiled that boy so. Well, he's a little boy. Ain't it supposed to know, ain't supposed to know about housekeeping. My baby, that's where he is. What you fix his breakfast? I feed my son, Leanna. I ain't meddling. I just know. I just noticed that all week he had cold cereal, and when it starts getting this chilly in the fall, a child I have some hot grit. I don't know. Sorry, I knew that I shouldn't have done that yet. Um, where is it? Um, right there. No, down. It's there it is. All right. Okay, some hot grits or something when he goes out in the cold. It, it back, isn't it back up? Yeah. yeah. Uh, I gave him hot grit oats in this. Is that all right? I ain't meddling. Put a lot of nice butter on it. He likes a lot of butter. Yeah. What was you and your brother fussing about this morning? It's not important, Mama. What was they fighting about? Now you know as well as I do. Brother still worrying about himself, sick about that money. You know he is. You had breakfast? Some coffee. Girl, you better start eating and looking after yourself. You almost as thin as Travis. Leanna. Uh huh. What are you gonna do with it? Now don't you start, child. It's too early in the morning to be talking about money. Ain't it? it ain't Christian. It's just that he got his heart set on that store. You mean that liquor store that Willie Harris want him to invest in? Yes. No business people, Ruth. We just plain wicked folks. Ain't nobody business people till they go out to, so they go into business. Walter Lee say colored people ain't never going to start getting ahead till they start gambling on some things, some kind of things in the world, investments and things. What then got into you, girl? Walter Lee done finally sold sold you on any business No, Mama, something happened between... Yeah. No, uh, Mama, no, Mama, something is happening between Walter and me, and I don't know what it is, but he needs something, uh, something I can't give him anymore. He needs this chance, Leanna. But liquor, honey? Well, like Walter say, I suspect, I suspect, People going to always be drinking themselves li some liquor. Well, whether they drink it or not, ain't none of my business. But 
there are girls. I'm so sorry. I was like, I can't tell what that. Man, that was several pages ago. What the heck? Uh, nope. Here. Page eight. That one. Scroll up some more. Yes, here we go. Okay. okay um, well, whether they drink or not is, is none of my business, but whether I go into business selling it to them is, and I don't want to... I don't want that on my ledger this late in life. Ruth Younger, what's the matter with you today? You look like you could fall over right there. I'm tired. Then you better sit, stay home from work today. I can't stay home. She'll be calling up the agency and screaming at them. My girl didn't come in today. Send, some, send me somebody. My girl didn't come in. Oh, she just have a fit. <laughs> Why the flu? Because it's not respectable to them. Something white people get to. They know about the flu. Otherwise, they think you've been cut up or something when you tell them you're sick. Um, right. I've got to go in. We need money. Somebody would have thought my children and all starved to death the way... They talk about money here lately. Child, we got a great big old check coming in tomorrow. Now that's your money and ain't no and it got nothing to do with me. Yeah, you know, like that. Walter and Benny and me, even Travis. Ten thousand dollars. Sure is wonderful. Ten thousand dollars. You know what you should do, Miss Leanna? You should take yourself on a trip somewhere to Europe or South America or someplace. Oh, child. I'm serious. Just pack up and leave. Go on and enjoy yourself some. Forget about the family and have yourself a ball for once in your life. You sound like I'm just about ready to die. Who go with me? What I look like going around here by myself. Shoot, here these rich white women do it all the time. They don't think nothing much of packing. They uh, they suitcases and piling uh, one of them big steamships and swoosh, they gone, child. Something always told me I wasn't a rich white woman. Well, what are you going to do with it then? Ain't nothing going to touch that part of it. Nothing. Been thinking, well, we maybe, been thinking that we maybe. Yeah. Right there. Oh, been thinking that we maybe could meet the notes on a little old two story somewhere with the yard where Travis could play in the summertime. You still with us, Angel? Huh? Are you still with us? There's just a little bit more to read, huh? I did. If this part, if we use part of the insurance for a down payment. Oh, I have. I guess it could have. If we use part of the insurance for a down payment and everybody kind of pitch in, I can maybe take on a little work again a few days a week. Well, Lord knows we've put enough rent into this place uh, and this here rat trap to pay for four houses by now the rat trap yes that's all it is i remember just as well as the day me and big walter moved in here hadn't been married but two weeks and wasn't planning on living nowhere more than a year mm. Right here, we was gonna get away little by little, don't you know? We was gonna get away little by 
gonna get away little by little, don't you know? And buy a little place on a Morgan Park. We had even picked out the house. <laughs> looks right, dump. Looks right, dumpy today. But Lord, child, you should know all the dreams I had about buying that house and fixing it up, making me a little garden in the back, and then none of it happened. <laughs> Yes, life can be a barrel of disappointment sometimes. I mean, Big Walter would have come in here. Some nice and packed. Nice back then and slumped down on the couch there. And just look at the rug and look at me. And look at the rug then back at me. And I know he was down then, really down. And then, Lord, when I lost that baby... Claude, I almost thought I was going to lose Big Walter too. Oh, that man grieved him himself. He was the he was the one that loved his children. Ain't nothing can tear you like losing your baby. I guess that's how come that man family worked himself to death like he done like that. Like he was fighting his own war with this here world that took his baby from him. He sure was a fine man, all right. I always liked Mr. Younger. Crazy about his children. God knows there was plenty wrong with Walter Younger. With Walter Younger, hard headed, mean, kind of wild, with women plenty wrong with him but he sure loved his children always wanted to have them have them want to have something be something that's where brother gets all these notations notions i reckon big walter used to say he get get wet in the eyes sometimes lean his head back with the water standing in his eyes and say seem like god didn't fit to give the black man nothing but dreams, but he did give us children to make them dreams seem worthwhile. He could talk like that, don't you know? Yes, yeah. oh. Yes, a fine man just, wait, no, it's. Yes, he sure yeah. could. Yes, he sure could. He was a good man, Mr. Younger. Yes, a fine man just can just can never catch up with his dream, that's all. What could be so dirty on that woman's rug that she has to vacuum them every single day? I wish certain women around here who I could name would take inspiration on certain rugs, like in a certain apartment I could also mention. How much cleaning can a house need, for Christ's sake? Baby, Ruth, just, just listen. <laughs> Oh, just oh, listen oh, to her. Oh, God. Um, if you use the Lord's name just one more time. Oh, Mama. Fresh. Just fresh as salt, this girl. Well, if the salt loses its savor. Now that will do. I just ain't going... I just ain't going to have you going on you around here reciting the scriptures and then you hear me? How did I manage to get on everybody's wrong side just by walking into a room? If you aren't so fresh. Ruth, I'm 22 years old. What time you be home from school today? Kind of late. Madeline is going to start my guitar lessons today. What kind of lessons? Guitar. Oh, Father. How come you done taking it to, in your mind to learn to play the guitar? I just want to, that's all. Lord, child, don't you know what to get tired of this now? Like, you got tired of that little do with yourself? How long is it going to be before you play acting group you joined last year. 
And what was the year before that? That horseback riding club that uh, which she bought, that $55 riding habit that was been hanging in the closet ever since. Why do you got to flip? I'm oh, sorry. Why do you got to flip so from one thing to another, baby? I just want to learn how to play the guitar. Is there anything wrong with that? Ain't nobody trying to stop you. I just wonder sometimes why you have to flip so from one thing to another all the time. You ain't never go done nothing with that camera equipment you brought home. I don't flit. I experiment with different forms of expression. Like riding a horse? People have to express themselves one way or another. And what is it you want to express? Me! Don't worry. I don't expect you to understand. Who are you, who are you going out with tomorrow night? George Murchausen again. You mean you wouldn't marry George Murchausen if he asked right. you? Wait, wait, it's Mama's turn. Oh. Oh, you're getting a little sweet on him. You ask me, this child ain't sweet on nobody but herself. Express herself. Oh, I like George all right, Mama. I mean, I like him enough to go out with him and stuff, but... But what does that and stuff mean? Mind your own business. Stop picking at her now, Ruth. What does it mean? It just means I could never really be serious about George. He's so shallow. Shallow? What do you mean he's shallow? He's rich. Hush, Ruth. I know he's rich. He knows he's rich, too. Well, what other qualities of men gotta have to satisfy you, little girl? You wouldn't even begin to understand. Anybody who married Walter could not possibly understand. What kind of way? Brothers a flip, let's face it. What's a flip? She's saying he's being cr crazy. It's not crazy. Brother isn't really crazy yet. He's, he's an elaborate neurotic. Hush your mouth. As for George, well, George looks good. He's got a beautiful car, and he takes me to nice places. And as my sister-in-law says, he's probably the richest boy I'll ever know. And I even like him sometimes. But if the youngers are sitting around waiting to see if their little Benny is going to tie up with the family like the Murchausens, they're wasting their time. You mean you wouldn't marry George Murchison if he asked you someday? That's pretty rich thing honey i knew you was old you was odd no i would not marry him if all i felt for him was what i feel now besides george's family wouldn't really like it why not oh mama the murchisons are honest to god real can rich colored people the only people in the world who are more snobbish than rich white people are rich colored people but everybody knew that i've met mrs murchison she's a scene They well off and Why not? It makes just as much sense as disliking people because they're poor, and a lot of people do that. Uh, well, she'll get over this, uh, some of this. Get over it? What are you talking about, Ruth? Listen, I'm going to be a doctor. I'm not worried about who I'm going to marry yet if I ever get married. Yeah. Now, Benny... Oh, I probably will, but first I'm going to be a doctor, and George, for one, he still thinks that's pretty funny. I couldn't be bothered with that. I'm going to be a doctor, and everybody around here better understand that. Of course you're going to be a doctor, honey. God, really. God hasn't got a thing to do with it. But neither, that, was, that just wasn't necessary. Well, neither is God. I get sick of hearing about God. I mean it. I'm just tired of hearing about God all the time. What has he got to do with anything? Does he pay tuition? You got to get your first little jaw slapped. That's what she needs, all right. Why? Why can't I say what I want to do around here like everybody else? It don't sound nice for a young, 
girl to say things like that. He wasn't brought up that way. Me and your father went to trouble to get you and your brother to church every Sunday. Mama, you don't understand. It's all a matter of ideas, and God is just one idea I don't accept. It's not important. I'm not going to go out and be immoral or commit crimes because I don't believe in God. I don't even think about it. It's just that I get tired of him getting credit for all the things the human race achieves through his own stubborn efforts. There's simply no blasted God. There's only man, and it is he who makes miracles. Now you say after me, in my mother's house, there is still God. In my mother's house, there is still God. In my mother's house, there is still God. There, is, there are some ideas we ain't going to have in this house not long as I am and as long as I'm the head of this house. Yes, ma'am. You think you a woman, Benny, but you still a little girl. What uh what you did was childish, so go so you got treated like a child. I see. I also see that everybody thinks it's all right for mama to be a tyrant. But all the tyranny in the world will never put God in the heavens. She said she was sorry. They're, they frightened me with my children. You got good children, Elena. They just a little off sometimes, but they're good. No, there's something come down between me and them that they don't let us understand each other. And I don't know what it is. One done almost lost his mind, thinking about money all the time, and the other one done commenced to talking about things I can't seem to understand in front of, in no form or fashion. What is this? What is that changing, Ruth? Now you're taking it all too seriously. You're just a strong-willed child. You just got strong-willed children, and it just takes a strong woman like you to keep them in hand. They spit it. They spit it all right. My children got to admit they got spirit. Benny and Walter, like this little old plant, they ain't never had enough sunshine or, or nothing. And look at it. You sure? Loves that little old thing, don't you? Well I, well, I always wanted me a garden like I used to see sometimes at the back of the house is down, down home. This plant is close as I ever got to having one. Lord, ain't nothing as dreary as the view from this window on a dreary day. Dreary day. Is there? Why ain't you singing this morning, Ruth? Sing that no ways I'm t no ways tired. That song always lifts me up. She turns at last to see that Ruth has slipped quietly to the floor in a state of semi consciousness. Ruth, Ruth, honey, what's the matter with you, Ruth? Okay, and so we are gonna stop there. That is Act One. Okay, if you guys will go to the other chart in Google Classroom, you'll see it's Act 1 Notes. It looks like this. And we see a bunch of characters in here who want different things. What does Walter want? What does Mama want? What does Benithia want? What does Travis want? And what does Ruth want? So that's what you're going to do. You're going to fill out that chart. And we will do scene two um, in our next class. Anybody have any questions? I, I think you guys probably have a pretty good idea of what's going on here. Dun, dun, dun. Okay, well, if you don't have any questions, then I think you see this is a family who has um, got some dreams. I'll, I'll let you guys chart them, and that is um, that's it for class today.